Here's the format for today's game. The first quarter will be 15 minutes. The others are 12 minutes in length. And in the second half, we'll have a running clock. Quarterbacks are off limits today. You'll see them in the white jersey today here at Lane Stadium. And to prevent some collisions, all punts and kickoffs, well, they're going to eliminate that. They're going to blow the whistle dead as soon as someone catches a kick. Yeah, but, I mean, Virginia Tech, and, and I have done this game with you, Bill, a few years ago, they do. Coach Pry has his spring game more like a regular game than a lot of programs out there. So they really get a lot out of it, and it's a, a good opportunity for young players to step up and uh, position themselves well for fall camp. Brent Pry has the Hokie Nation so excited. They've put together a couple of great recruiting classes in a row. A lot of those recruits are here today. He's already working on next year's class as well. And the enthusiasm, it has been contagious for this fan base over the last year and a half. Yeah, and again, I think I stated it in the open. I mean, to get to that winning record mark, seven wins last year, get that bowl win, get that, that monkey off your back. And it's been seven years since you've been able to get a bowl win. Uh, has paid dividends and really propelled this program into this spring. And, uh, you know, they've added some nice additions in the portal as well. So this is a team I think you really got to watch out for in the ACC. They are going to compete next season, there's no doubt. Drones was one of the most accurate passers in the conference a year ago. The Maroon team won the toss, so we're going to get to see Kyron Drones off the very beginning of this game today. He says... I'm going to be even better this year as opposed to last year in which he was second in the conference in passing efficiency. And, you know, and we had a great conversation with Kyron this week, and, you know, he talks about, you know, when he got that start here at home in Lane Stadium against Pitt, that was really the turning point for him. He worked hard even though he wasn't the starter day one, and it's really paid off for the young man, and he's only going to get better. Sky's the limit for Kyron Drones. John Love will kick things off. He is a sophomore from Spartanburg, South Carolina. He'll be kicking for the Orange team today. And again, they're going to use a quick whistle with the wind at his back, though, and it is a windy day here at Lane Stadium. Reeney, one would expect a touchback to start things off. Anything kicking towards this end zone to our right, the south end zone, will have the wind at its back, whether it's kickoffs or field goals. And we will indeed have a touchback to start today's game. So 15 minutes, the first quarter today, just like a regular game. We're going to stop the clock between plays, and we'll get our first look today at the big fella from Texas, Kyron Jones. He told us, I feel more comfortable and more confident than I ever have in my career. Yeah, and again, he talked about specifically uh, his leadership role on the field, being like a coach out there which you want your quarterback to be and he said he's taking strides and feels like he, he's taking a step in that capacity and is much better look at that Thomas going to throw it little tricky starting things off and it's an incomplete pass well we're going to see some really exciting things today that was Malachi Thomas young man from Georgia putting the ball up early yeah, showing the arm there getting it out well he threw a big touchdown pass on this field last year in the Syracuse game so he has no problem running it or throwing it here's drones dumping it off to Turner Bradshaw this guy's got a lot of speed and he's forced out of bounds on the 42 yard line by Sam Brumfield who's making his lane stadium debut today Here's the first completed pass of the day. Yeah, I like the play call. You, you see, the, the it, that's a true RPO run pass option there as Drones puts it in the belly of Thomas, pulls it out, and then hits his receiver, Bradshaw. A rollout throw for Drones, and he delivers it again, two for two to start the game, and that was Lovett that made the play. They're really concerned about his adjusted completion percentage, throwing the ball perfectly. But I'd love moving Kyron Drones out of the pocket because he's so big and strong he can hurt you with his feet as well. Just shy of midfield, Thomas struggles and a good defensive stop up front. It's going to set up a third down play. That was Brumfield again. That's his second tackle. He is making his 
he and Gabe Williams in there making uh, their debuts at Virginia Tech. On short yardage, there's Thomas, and he's got the first down ahead to the 40-yard line where Tyler Childress brings down the Virginia Tech tailback. And, and Malachi Thomas, much like Mayshall Tootin, he's a three-down back as well. A little bigger than Tootin, six foot two fifteen. Thomas goes. He gets it again. Thomas has been the featured performer here. He's ahead for about four yards on the play. Love it came up to bring down Malachi Thomas. A year ago in this game, Drones did not have the veteran offensive line in front of him, and he had somewhat of a rough day. This year, good O-line, good protection, and a deep shot for Turner Bradshaw left side, and it's going to be intercepted in the end zone, and they're going to blow the play dead. Let's watch what happened. Strong was the one that ended up catching the ball. One of the top corners in the league. Yeah, Drones had some pressure, slid out of the pocket, and then really threw a 50-50 ball. And Aiden Green just kind of mistimed his jump. And again, it's windy out there. You talked about it, Bill. Gets intercepted, but they'll bring it back here and give it to the offense again. They blew the play dead because of the wind. And on third down, this pass is incomplete. And now it is fourth down. But that, that is the nice thing about a spring game. And Coach Pry, you can, you can tweak it. You can run some plays over. You can get your quarterback, your offense in situations, and your defense for that matter, and give them second looks and second opportunities. Going into the wind, they'll go for it on fourth down and short. Thomas has been the featured back. He's caught a pass. He's thrown a pass on this possession. Quarterback run, no, they flip it nicely done, but Thomas can't hang on over there. And the ball turns over on downs. They're going to call it a sack. Yeah. I guess he got tacked right before. So someone got a hand on Kyron's jersey. And so now the white jersey will flip over to a gentleman by the name of Pop Watson, William Watson from Massachusetts. And the Orange team's got pretty good field position. Pop Watson, he and Dylan Whitkey are battling for that backup quarterback position to back up Drone. So this is a very big day for a lot of people, but particularly those quarterbacks. Watson's first throw, nicely done to Jennings. And that'll be a first down on a gain of about 17 to Ollie Jennings. Thomas Williams made the play defensively. Jennings will be a big, big returnee for the Hokies after he was hurt early last season. Yeah, good job by Watson. Rolling to his left, he's right hand. And really open those hips up and throw a strike on the move. Nice pass by Pop Watson. From the 38, they roll the pocket again for Pop. Again to Jennings. Same guys, and Ali stepped out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. You know, Ali started at West Virginia, then he went to Old Dominion, finally came to Virginia Tech last year. There were such high hopes for him, and he got hurt early. But the young man from Richmond came back, and he's one of the leaders of that deep receiver's and, room. And he's gone this entire spring, 100%, good to go. Good size is Jennings, 6'2", 207. That's the type of body you want on the outside in that wide receiver position. Watson's thrown the ball with confidence. That one's batted in the air, and it is intercepted. It was deflected and tipped. I think it was Burgos that got a hand on it initially. And Copeland came up with a carom. One of the uh, newcomers, Kamari Copeland, the big defensive lineman off the tip. It's going to come down with that interception. Good pressure that time. And the defense getting after it. What a debut for Copeland. Young man from Virginia Beach, finally back in Blacksburg. Makes a big play early. Well, last year, this is the way it went for Brent Pry and the Hokies. Tech started with a two and four record, but then they turned things around midway through the season, didn't they, Reeney? They sure did, and you know, a lot of people point 
to that Pittsburgh game here where they won 38-21 to kind of get them going. And then that Syracuse game, I think they really dominated, especially up front in the ground game. Those two wins I think you can point to got them going. End of the year with a big win over a ranked Tulane team in the Military Bowl in Annapolis, Maryland. And with Drones back at quarterback, high hopes for this team. And this is what Drones can do. Look at him run. Again, if he gets tagged just with a hand, he's officially down. But that's 13 yards on the ground for Drones. And you mentioned the pit game last year. It was the pit coach Narduzzi that said, that is a big old guy. He is hard to bring well, down. Well, you see how smooth and athletic he is when he runs and that speed. That's a 235-pound quarterback coming at you with that athleticism. From the 37, oh, the orange team shows a little blitz, and they hand the football off, and that's another strong run. So we've seen an awful lot of some young guys, and P.J. Prelo is a gentleman that the Hokie coaches are so excited about. His daddy is a coach and a former player on this team, and P.J.'s from just down the road in Radford. Yeah, they call him the Swiss Army Knife. He can kind of do everything, and he's a space guy. You want to get him the ball in space because uh, he's elusive. They give him the ball again and a huge hole. There goes Prelo, and he'll score. A lot of smiles from the Prelo family and everyone from Radford, Virginia as he gets into the end zone for the first time. And you see the great job by the offensive line. You're pulling backside, you got kick out blocks. Great job up front. You give it to Prelo, good patience through the hole. And then you see that speed down the left sideline. Excellent play. Kyle Lowe in to attempt the extra point for the Maroon team. And our first scoring of this year's Virginia Tech spring game is by P.J. Prelo. A lot of thought when he came in, what position would Prelo play at Virginia Tech? His father was, a, at the time, all Big East Conference defensive back. Prelo's just a great athlete, wonderful young man to have in this program. I know he's excited. So I mentioned the fact that his daddy played at Tech. And he played for our uh, first guest today, Bud Foster. How does it feel to watch one of your star players' sons <laughs> score a touchdown. Well, it's really cool, you know, and, and I live in Radford now, and I've got a chance to see P.J. play in high school, and, and uh, you know, he looks a lot like his dad. I mean, you know, he's – but, P, you know, Pearson was a defensive guy. I don't think he had those kind of moves right there, but, uh, no, it's really cool. That's when you're, you start dating yourself and aging yourself a little bit when the guys uh, that you coach, they have their sons here. But, no, it's great to see. And that's what this program's all been about. As you know that, we had 28 sets of brothers that were here in our time here, and I know there's several. We've had, even when I was here long enough, that we had sons of dads, you know, that I recruited back early on when we got here. But, no. Uh, that's part of what, you know, we, we have here. It's a true family, and, and Brent's doing a great job creating a tremendous culture here and family-first mentality, and I like the direction we're going, but that just showed a, a part of that, but the talent we have here right now is pretty cool. Yeah. On this windy day, they'll have to hold the ball on this kickoff, and this will be another touchback. Bud had such an amazing career. As everyone who follows the Hokies or college football knows, one of the great defensive coordinators in the history of our game from 1987 through 2019, the 2006 Frank Broyles award winner, seven times a Virginia Tech team led by Bud, led the nation in total defense and longest tenured assistant coach at the same school. And if you look closely, that lunch pail, it's still a very, very big part of this program. Yeah, and it's neat that Brent, you know, he asked me to bring that thing back. And, and that's what, you know, we're, we're kind of known for, or, or, you know, the blue collar work ethic and going out and, and you know, uh, out competing guys, out working guys. And I tell you what, he's really done a great job. Oh, there you go. Another big we need run. To get that this is Coney. Defense back. Coney, <laughs> another young freshman. Well, he saw Prelo score, and Coney's out of Hermitage High School down in Richmond. It was Phillips that finally caught him down. You know, it's funny. You want the young guys to do great offensively, but then 
that upsets the defensive guys. Well, and I do the, I know this. I know they're limited probably yeah. on, on defensively what we do. It's, that's usually in the, been in the past with uh, with spring games. I did see that we brought a little bit of pressure here and there a little earlier. I know Coach Beamer didn't like that, but it's neat. We've got such a good group of talent right now, and I watched a majority of the spring practices um, this year, and we just got a lot of competition. And no more than this quarterback spot. I really I tell you what, I, I like. Uh, That's Pop Watts, yeah. and that'll go down as a sack. Well, the thing I like, too, Coach, is you talk about depth, offensive line. Yes. You know, normally in a spring game, one side's better than the other. We've seen that before. There's a lot of depth at offensive line, and so we're seeing it on whatever offense is out there. Well, you know, today's day and age of the portal, it's still yeah. you got to create your foundation. I think it starts on, on that 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 spot of, of your of your football team. And uh, – They've had a great offseason. Um, uh, Deej has done a great job in the weight room with our guys. And, and I see a difference in our the look of our football team from this year, a year ago, to where we are now. It's just uh, the kids are they're bought in. There's a different energy having the success they had the latter part of the season. I just see a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of excitement from within them. A great brotherhood. And that's important, that chemistry, as you know. Oh, yeah. That's a big, big part of, uh, of the success of your football team. But let me ask you this. In the portal, Gilliam and, and, and Peebles from Duke and Copeland come in. Experienced guys in the portal that have played at other really good programs coming in. What an advantage that is in the portal to be able to get experienced defensive line. Yeah, I think that's the where the you know what Brent's doing a great job of. He's building this program by recruiting high school kids number one and fitting your needs. And that's the one thing yeah. the portal allows you to do maybe is get some immediate impact guys. But to have that maturity and experience, um, and you know a lot of that um, you know like the like Peoples, he you know he had a uh, he was with uh, Derek Jones at Duke. So there was a relationship there, and we're still in a relationship-driven business, you know, yeah. and, uh, and, and more than ever now with the portal, uh, just developing those relationships to keep guys here and that you, you're invested in. It's like you said, I mean, the, the four additions that Bill talked about defensively, Brumfield, too, from Middle yeah. Tennessee, those filled needs. I mean, those yes. were great additions to this team. Well, we lost three defensive yeah. linemen from last year, but these guys, I'm not for sure, you know, uh, just with their experience and, and their background and their size that we've helped, we have not helped ourselves. I know we've helped ourselves in the middle a little bit with, with Brumfield. I like what his, what he's doing and how he's coming along and, you know, in a short period of time, but uh, I'm excited. I mean, I, every day there's competition. We've got more depth and that's what makes your team better. When you can yeah. go out and compete, you know, every day, that's so what it's all about. They're the newcomers, but yeah. this is what we're talking about. So, you're going out and you're getting a guy like Peebles, who was an all-ACC guy at Duke. Kelvin Gilliam, who, by the way, a native Virginia, same with yep. Copeland. They're coming back. Sam was an all-conference linebacker at Conference USA. Yeah. They've seen a lot. They have seen a lot. And uh, like I said, that the experience is the best teacher. And uh, these guys have been in those positions and uh, had success and good programs. And, uh, you know, that's – but they see, they see something here – from not only just the culture, but then that this is a championship brand program. You know, it's not a competitive brand program. And Brent's doing a great job, of, you know, of those young guys and the newcomers, but everybody understanding that and building towards that, you know, so. But it is great to see you. Everyone in the Hokie Nation loves the fact that you are still incredibly engaged day to day yeah. with our program here. well i appreciate it you know the, this place has been so kind to me and my family and uh i love being a part of this what again another great turnout you know the Hokie nation starving uh for this football program to have the success that we had yeah. in the past and and i like like i said i love what brent's doing and i'm excited about the future but Randy, thank you Brent's for having good you. to see you Coach. but appreciate you guys having me on the air bud foster hall of fame virginia tech defensive coordinator joining us here nice punt going to go out of bounds or roll dead on the eight nice job lane stadium we'll be back in just a moment a year ago was really two seasons in one for the virginia tech Hokies. the opening six games and the final seven in every category the Hokies finished so strong down the stretch winning Six of nine, but five of the last seven games. Well, and you see the biggest difference, right? Yards rushing per game went up tremendously. Better third down conversions. 
plays at 10 plus yards. So to me, that's offensive line getting after it. And Kyron Drones, his running ability affected that as well. I mean, he ended up last year with 818 yards rushing, uh, a big piece of it. Drones flips it off to Thomas, gets a nice block and has a huge hole. Look at the speed of Malachi Thomas. Still going inside the 30. And what a tremendous play. Little flick of the wrist. Thomas goes for 68 yards. And his teammate Dorian Strong finally tracked him down. That's what you do against aggressive defenses. The defenses come, you run a little slip screen to the right. And look at those offensive linemen out front running. You love to see that. Caden Moore, 68. The center out in front leading the way. Great play. The initial block was thrown by a newcomer at Virginia Tech and one of the biggest guys on the team. There's a quick flip over here to Prelo. That was Montavious Cunningham, 66. We had a solar eclipse yeah. last week. This is basically a guy that can create an eclipse in the backfield. He transferred to Virginia Tech from Georgia State, and that's a young man who's got a chance to really contribute this fall. Well, his nickname's Hog, and I didn't get a chance to say it on the replay, but he actually was the pulling lineman on that touchdown run from Prelo. Excellent job, good feet for his big size. Drones buying some time, flips to the end zone and throws it away. Now that's good decision making, and that's one thing that he did so well last year, Rini. They talk about, Tyler Bowen talks about the rule of zero. Don't force a pass. If nothing happens on a play, throw it away just like that. We'll come back and get it again. That's one of Coach Bowen's staples, the rule of zero, and Drones has bought into that completely. Yeah, live for another down, and uh, it's smart because you see how a lot of quarterbacks will force it in throw an interception, just throw it away, especially when you're in the red zone, right? I mean, just throw it away. You're gonna at least get a field goal attempt. You don't wanna force it and try to get an interception, so good play. Maroon team needs to get to the 14-yard line. That snaps a bit high. What a tremendous shift by Prelo. It will be first and goal. Boy, he showed us some wiggle there, didn't he? <laughs> I'm telling you, he, he is very shifty. In the open field, just a little inside handoff. And just, you see that move right there. He put on the defender, Tyler Childress. And uh, yeah, just uh, hard to bring down a running back like Prelo now that's one-on-one. What, that's what Bud was talking yeah. about. Daddy played defense. He didn't have a quick little shift yeah. like that. Drones to the end zone for the touchdown. Nicely done to Hairston. Kyron gets his first touchdown pass. Ayrston's out of Bassett. And that's something that Tech fans grew used to seeing a year ago. Kyron Drones, he threw 17 touchdowns last year, only three interceptions, and that's why he's made such good decisions over the course of his career. And you go back to it, that first down throw away, yeah. you don't even think about it now, do you? And that's... He talked about leadership. I mean, that's leadership as well, like managing the game, knowing, uh, you know, down and distance, where you are in the field. And I love the play call in that, again, a little play action underneath to Prelo, and then you kind of a soft roll by drones to the left. You, give, you know, you have a receiver underneath. You have a receiver in the corner. You give him two options, and really three because he could run it as well. And just a nice throw to Harrison for the touchdown. Lovett wasn't quite sure who to cover on that play. I think Kyron had a couple of guys open, but you mentioned his leadership skills in the locker room, in the weight room, in team meetings. He's really emerged as a leader on this team. His daddy was a high school coach. You can kind of tell he's a really cerebral kid. And the thing I love about him that people probably don't realize, and in this day and age of the transfer portal and people leaving, when he didn't win the starting job to start the season in 23, I mean, he could have easily left. I mean, you see quarterbacks leaving like crazy. He got it out and said, no, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to win this starting job. And he ultimately did and led them to a bowl victory last season. Into the wind again on the kickoff. This is low. And good luck with that kick. Yeah, that's going to bounce. And it'll be returned from the 20. And again, the short and quick whistle kills the play. 14 nothing. 
the Maroon team with the lead. And let's see what Pop Watson can do now to try to rally the Orange team. We will probably only see drones for a quarter. That's kind of what they thought today because we know he's going to be the starting quarterback for Virginia Tech this year. The question is, where do the Hokies turn if they have to go somewhere else at quarterback because of an injury, whether it's for a play, a series, or even longer? And that's why Watson, and we'll see a lot of Dylan Whitkey today as well, who is going to be the number two QB for Virginia Tech. Here's Coney again. He had that long run earlier, and he gets about nine on the first down play here. You know, and talking to Tyler Bowen about both of those quarterbacks, Bill, it's, yes, who's going to step up to be the number two, but once that person becomes the number two, can we trust them to go in and win a game, right, if Drones isn't playing? Uh-oh, yeah. bad snap. Kind of slipped out of the hands of Pop, and it's going to be recovered by Burgos. What a game he's had. <laughs> He has a pass deflection, three sacks, and now a fumble recovery. Yeah, and he's, uh, he's, he, he wants a spring game MVP. There's no doubt about it. Keyshawn Burgos. And that time, just right place, right time, right? Come up field. You have the drop by Pop Watson, and Burgos says, eh, I'll take that. And there's Tyler Bowen. So Burgos is happy about it, visiting with the Hokies' longtime defensive line coach, J.C. Price, but that's something that Pop can't do as the backup yeah. quarterback. Yeah, you just, those, those are those kind of those unforced errors, right? You just can't, can't do it. I mean, he saw the pitcher of Keyshawn Burgos there. I mean, he's 6'5", 250. He just runs like a wide receiver. It's just ridiculous what these defensive linemen can do these days. So Drones and his team up 14-0 from the 30. Prelo, who's been one of the stars today, gets a good first down run of nearly eight yards, cutting it back to the left. Braylon Johnson from Highland Springs High School makes the tackle. Yeah, we've seen a lot of Prelo between the tackles today, running thus far, but he's one of those guys, jet sweep, screen passes, uh, that you can utilize in many ways. They're gonna throw him the ball again, nice catch. Prelo inside the 10, does he score? You bet. Touchdown Tech, 22 yards away. P.J. Prelo with his second touchdown. And this is where I think they'll utilize P.J. Prelo the most in this upcoming season, getting him into the flat, getting him in the pass game because he is so hard to take down in the open field. I mean, you have Tootin and Thomas kind of you know, your, your bell cows for between the tackles. Now, Prelo can run between the tackles. He's showing that, but he's dangerous on the outside. You get him in space in that passing game. Kyle Lowe adds the extra point, and it is a 21-0 Maroon team lead. Maroon team lead. Prelo has run for a touchdown, passed for a touchdown. He's one of the... Really many hokey tailbacks for Coach Elijah Brooks. That's a good group there on the left. They had to replace several players, but the majority of the offense is back. And you see Tyler Mason there incoming. He's an early enrollee, so he's getting experience. One of those kids that should still be in high school, but graduated early enrollee. He's been showing flashes in spring as well. So yeah, that's a deep room there. Uh, nice to have. Well, this Tech team is trying to recapture uh, its glory under Coach Pry. A whole bunch of former Virginia Tech players are on his staff. And a former Hokie great, Tyrod Taylor, is here today. We had over 100 former players at an event here last night. Does Tyrod age? I mean, he looks like he did when he played here. He looks great. Now, uh, New York Jet, Tyrod yeah. Taylor. Hey. They're going to pay you. Keep playing, right? I'm sure that's what he's thinking. Former ACC Player of the Year. Well, the Maroon team has had a good start today. Let's see if the Orange team can get it going. They've taken advantage of good field position, the turnover by Watson. Here's the kickoff coming. Let's see if Coney can do anything with this one. Oh, it's going to be muffed in the end zone. Going to run it out nonetheless. And the whistle will kill the play 
So Watson will get another chance late here in this opening quarter of the annual Maroon Orange Virginia Tech spring game. You may want to say, well, what's on the line today? Well, if you're a player, <laughs> the winning team is getting delicious grilled steaks tonight. Can't beat it. And the losing team? Cold hot dogs. Now, in all fairness, they were supposed to be hot dogs that were warm, but what had happened was by the time the kids got to them, they were cold. So Coach said, you know what? We're going to make them cold for now on. So the losers will always get cold hot dogs. Let's see what Watson and the Orange team could do now. Trailing 21-0 late in the first. They start on the ground. That is Traylon Mitchell. And Burgos made the tackle on the freshman. He's from Middlesex, North Carolina. Burgos is a guy. Look at those guns. He is a gentleman that was a key player last year. He's from Matoaka High School. That's near, uh, just outside of Richmond, Chesterfield, Virginia. He's had a huge game today. Number two for Maroon. Watson looked left, rolls right. And that'll go down simply as a sack. And you know, going back to Keyshawn Burgos, we talked about his body. He's got long legs and long arms. So when, you're, when you have length like that, and you have that, they like to say, twitchiness. He has it, but he's fast and strong off the ball. I mean, that, that's the new age rush defensive end right there. Well, you know, when Coach Pry was an assistant coach at Virginia Tech, they led the nation in sacks. Yeah. He wants that type of defensive front. They had that at Penn State uh, when he was up there. Mitchell on the screen gets the first down to the 38-yard line. That was Thomas Williams, a freshman defensive back, with the tackle on Mitchell. That's what Pry wants, that aggressive defense. And he and, and, and Marv have been talking about this group is fun to watch. They were so much better in 23 compared to 22, and, and they think they'll make an even further incremental step this year. Yeah, it ended up, I believe you might have mentioned it, second in the ACC in sacks last year. So a big improvement. Watson in the final minute of the opening quarter. And he does a nice job of throwing that away. Yeah, Watson has been harassed by that defense. Defensive coordinator Chris Marv says, man, we are hungry. That's where the Hokies were a year ago in the nation in sacks and tackles for loss. And the thing Coach Marv told us he wanted to see his defense doing this spring was rally to the football. He wants to see a ton of jerseys on it. They wear maroon. Defense does during the spring, and he said they've done it well. Watson takes a deep shot, and it's incomplete. That was Devin Alvis. It was down there to break up the pass, intended for Jalen Lane. Yeah, Alvis did a good job not interfering there. Really didn't turn on the ball to the last second. Lane thought he could maybe come down with that one, and Elvis gets the PBU, pass breakup. Final 39 seconds of the opening quarter. The Maroon team's up 21-0. Coming up in a minute, we'll be visiting with the Hokies head coach, Brent Pry. There's the fifth sack of this game. That's Jason Abbey, freshman defensive lineman from Freeman High School, Richmond, Virginia, that gets the sack. And it'll be fourth down in the final 20 seconds. I'm really excited to talk to Coach Pry. He's in his third year here at Virginia Tech, and you could seriously see this thing what he wants to do, turn. And I like the patience, right, that people have given him because in this day and age, you just, people get impatient, right? They want to win right away. When a coach takes over a program, you just got to let him get here, his philosophy, get his people in there, build it, and he's doing a nice job. We'll talk with Coach Pry coming up after one quarter of play here at Lane Stadium. It has been all maroon. Kyron Drones and the maroon team up 21 zip. Back in Blacksburg, getting set for quarter number two in the spring game. It's been an incredible weekend, a beautiful day in Blacksburg. And third-year head coach Brent Pry joins us from the field as we wrap up the spring. Coach, what do you think so far? Yeah, I tell you, P.J. Prelude, surprise of the scrimmage. 
He's got a couple of touchdowns. He looks good earlier. How about your message for what you've seen here over the last month or so? Yeah, I tell you, it's been a good spring. The guys have uh, been invested. They, they've, you know, they, they didn't, uh, they stayed hungry. Just really proud of the, the effort and the investment from the old guys, the mentoring of the young guys. It, it's, been, it's been fun to watch. Coach, as good as P.J. Prelo's been on offense, Keyshawn Burgos has been that good on defense. Man, he's getting after it. But let me tell you, both those guys had really good springs for us. Here's a deep shot. They're going to call that a sack. Whitkey tried yeah. to throw it deep. Both of them had really good springs. P.J.'s one of the more improved guys. He's actually he's played some slot for us, and he's also played tailback, obviously. Yeah, he's that guy, Coach. You can get him in the space. You know, you saw the little uh, the, the pass into the flat. I mean, he's dangerous in the open field. And he's a great complement, you know, to Tootin and Thomas, kind of more your bigger backs. You're exactly right. He can make people miss. He's durable. This is a young running back, Tyler Mason here, true freshman. Tyler's out of Mount Airy, North Carolina. The running back room looks really loaded for you too, Coach. Yeah, I'm excited about it right now. Yeah, those guys have have done a nice job. Coach Brooks has, you know, really elevated the room. And That's C.J. McCray that uh, was shaken up on the play. The medical team will go out to him. Coach, you we had a chance to visit yesterday. You talked a lot about the improvement of the, the second-year guys, the Caleb Woodsons, the Aiden Greens, those type of guys. What impresses you the most about that class specifically? Yeah, those guys... I tell you, I mean, some of them got some reps last year and got a little bit of experience, but they, that group you mentioned, had a really good spring. I mean, it started in the winter competing with these old guys that came back, you know, not just willing to sit behind them. Competed with those guys, battled. That's how you get better. They pushed the guys in front of them. Coach, you know, it's no secret. Obviously, Dylan Whitkey, Pop Watson, they're fighting for the, the backup job. What specifically do you want to see out of those two today? Yeah, I want to see them run the offense. You know, that's first and foremost. You know, let's let's be on point, make the right checks, make the right audibles. And you all right, babe? Hopefully CJ will be okay. Yeah, yeah, Looks like his okay. left ankle, but uh, he's in good hands over there on the sidelines. Yeah, the – the backup quarterback position is is something that's really important. You know, everyone yeah, knows is. that Drones is the is the guy, but all it takes is one play, and you, your backup QB is the key guy on your team. Yeah, that's exactly right, and that's what these guys understand. You know, and and, and they've both gotten better, Dylan and Pop. But you know, to say by September, you know, if Drones is out, can we go win a couple ball games with him? We're not there yet. We're not there yet, but you know, we could we could be. So. It's going to be third down for Dillon and the Maroon team that has a 21-0 lead. Virginia Tech head coach Brent Pry joining us here. Third down. Let's see what the Maroon team does now. Good throw to Thomas. Stays on his feet, and he's near the first down. You know, Malachi had a big run. I'll tell you who had a good key block on that one uh, in the first quarter, Coach, was Montavious Cunningham. He's another one of those newcomers that really stands out. Yeah, he's done a nice job. He really has. He's getting better all the time. Got a little fourth and short here. You're going to go for it here or are you going to punt, Coach? Yeah, we're going to go for it, man. Spring game. Here you go. You guys playing. He got it. He does have the first That's down. Good run. Good run. Coach, i got to ask you, we saw Aiden Green make that third down catch earlier, and he was just in the blocking game there. Uh, everyone I've talked to, he's been the most impressive this spring. Talk about uh, Aiden Green. Yeah, I'll tell you, his, he's a model of consistency. He competes like crazy with everything he does. In the meeting rooms, on the field, he's really grown in so many areas, and it's shown up in his play. Um, you know, that's a very competitive and talented wide receiver room. And he has really shined. That was Jordan McDonald that made the play defensively. 
Coach, when we came on the air today, we talked about 86% of the production is back. It's such a different program and team that we're seeing today. You mentioned to the guys last week in practice, you said, we're light years ahead of where we were in April of 2023. And you can see it, just what we've seen so far today. Whitkey in the air. Nice leaping grab by Green. Yeah, nice tackle by Braylon. Good play, good play all around. You know, as a head coach, that's what you hope you see, right? <laughs> you, you want everybody making some good plays. That was Jaden that's a bit shaken up on the play. We're going to step aside. Coach, thanks so much for joining us. Absolutely. We're psyched to see uh, the Hokies in action here. Congrats on what you're doing, and good job with all these recruits who are here today. I know they're... They're just ex as excited to be here as you are to have them. Uh, we've got 150 recruits and families, and, and then we've got 100 of our lettermen that return to Blacksburg for the weekend. So, you know, it, this is what tech is all about. So I couldn't be more excited. Appreciate you guys. That's Brent Pry. We appreciate Thanks, him coach. joining us here in the first half. More from Lane Stadium straight ahead. You're watching the 2024 Virginia Tech Spring Football Game here on the ACC Network. And, Rini, this is what Lane Stadium is all about. It's football season. It's turkey leg season uh, here in Blacksburg. Now I, know, I know you don't do that, Bill, because you look great. You, what, you lose 20, 30 pounds? You look awesome. Staying away from, uh, You're staying away from those turkey legs like that. From the like buffets, that. Yeah. yeah. Here's Dylan Whitkey. Gets rid of it. No, he got tapped on the shoulder, and that negates a good throw to Green. You know, this is a young man, number 26, who's going to be a – a big impact player for Pry and the Hokies this fall. You know, but even though they blew that dead, Dylan Wicke shows you in the pocket, strong arm, slides to his left, just a nice strike to Aiden Green. Again, we talked to Coach Pry about him, and he's been the most consistent uh, and biggest, you know, I don't want to say a surprise, because they know he's going to be a good player this spring at that wide receiver position. Whitkey throws it short to Mason again. The ball's on the ground. They're going to rule it a catch and a fumble on the play. And another turnover. That was Josh Golston that made the hit to knock it free. And it's another turnover. They got to secure the ball in traffic. But, you know, this Orange team needed to make a play, and they're going to get one here. And it just you know, kind of gets punched out and it, as a as a, a runner with the ball. You just got to get it in there high and tight, make sure it's secure, especially in traffic. And Mason goes to the ground and a good recovery by the Orange team. And he knows it. You know, you just got to hold on to that. That's the young freshman, Tyler Mason. Josh made the play. He's a Blacksburg High School product. Got a big smile on his face. It's been a while since the Hokies have had a key guy from Blacksburg High School. Here's Watson, and that'll go as a sack again. He got tapped on the shoulder by Abby. And again, fans may want to know, why is it a sack if you get tagged? Well, they want to protect the yeah. quarterbacks. Yeah, you can't. You just can't hit your quarterbacks right now. You, you can't lose them. you got to have them all when you come in. And that right there, well, that was a coverage sack because he had time to throw the ball, did Pop Watson, but excellent coverage on the back end there. The second quarter is just 12 minutes in the second half. We'll have a running clock for two 12-minute quarters. Watson throws that one a bit high. That is Heath with the catch and a pickup of four. Heath knocked down by Clark. You know, he's another young man from Highland Springs High School, just uh, east of Richmond. They put such an emphasis on recruiting in-state players. Well, and we talked about how deep the running back room is. The wide receiver room may be the deepest top to bottom. There's a lot of talent there and a lot of in-state talent, as you said, Bill. Third and 15 for Watson. Flips it to the right. Good open field tackle. They got Coney down. Josh Clark, two plays in a row. So the Hokies knew a year ago they needed to go in the portal, and they did. They connected with wide receivers. They got Jennings. But you can see what they've got back. Felton, Lane, who came from Middle Tennessee State. Gosnell, Jennings, Tucker Holloway, and Green, who has been really the star 
of this spring practice at Virginia Tech. And a ton of competition there to get on the field, and that's going to make that group all that much better. Heath on fourth down. He's going to make the catch, and the yards after catch gives them a big first down, a 14-yard pickup. Caleb Woodson with the tackle. Yeah, good strike that time by Pop Watson. Good protection. Sits in that pocket. He's going to set his feet and just throw a strike between defenders. It's a good play. Watson has completed 7 of 10 for 82 yards, trying to get the orange team on the board late in the second quarter. Here is Coney, the freshman from Richmond. Got ahead for a couple of yards. I think the offensive line has played well on both sides today. You know, they've kind of split that group up. You've got three starters on orange, two starters on maroon. So the guys that have worked yeah. together all spring aren't playing together today. You lose that continuity, which is huge for offensive line. So we usually see this in a spring game. But as far as spring games go, because they are so deep and talented, both offensive lines playing pretty well. From the 26, Coney slipped. He might have taken that a lot further, but he's right near the first down marker on the 20. Alves made the tackle on Jeremiah. Yeah, had some running room there. Just tries to cut back, loses his footing. Good job up front, just loses his footing and goes down and could have been much more. They'll give him the first down ahead to the 20-yard line. This Orange team's down three scores in the first half. Let's see what Pop can do. To the air, and it's caught by Jennings. And he's got another first down. It'll be first down and goal to go. Joshua Clark again made the tackle on Ali Jennings. Yeah, nice patience there by Pop Watson. He looked like he wanted to go underneath the Heath. He was covered. Jennings running that middle over route. Good job by Watson to put it on him, and it's first and goal for the Orange. Big hit right up the gut. What a sensational play by James Jeanette. Yeah, Jeanette's going to come off right side of the screen. Gets inside underneath the block of the tight end, St. Germain. And once you do that, you beat that block underneath. If it's an inside play, you're going to blow it up. And that's exactly what Jeanette did. Good job by Coney to hang on to the ball. Now Watson on the move. And he is ruled down on the one. That would have been a touchdown, of course. Yeah, and I think the officials could have given him the touchdown <laughs> there. And Coach Pry might step in and say that's a score because in real life, that's a touchdown. They're not stopping him. And I think they are going to give him the score. We'll see. Yeah, they're going to give him the score. And that's the right thing to do. So Good job, Pop Watson. He gets hit. So you may ask, what's the difference between Pop Watson and Dylan Whitkey? They're both fighting for this backup job. Well, right there, Pop Watson's more elusive. He's more athletic. When Whitkey runs the ball, he's more powerful. But they both have very strong arms. John Love adds the extra point, and the orange team gets on the board. It's 21 to seven. After a 45 yard touchdown drive, Pop Watson into the end zone for the orange team. Back at the Virginia Tech spring game, we're joined now by the Hokies third year defensive coordinator, Chris Marv, who's mic'd up on the sidelines during the game. Howdy coach, what are your impressions of what you've seen so far today? Hey guys, you know, our defense is split up right now, but what I've been seeing is guys playing with phenomenal intensity. You know, the aggression is there that we're looking for. The pre-snap, post-snap communication is there. Um, the fundamentals are there. Obviously it's gonna be a little bit better right now in the run game. But, man, I'm liking what I'm seeing overall. And, Coach, we talked about it yesterday. You said one of the emphasis this spring was you want to see guys flying to the football. That's always an emphasis for you. I know that. But how have they been rallying to the football today? Happy with that? I'm pretty I'm pretty happy right now. I mean, we're sitting in the, at the back end of the second quarter. We got seven sacks if you combine both sides. We have three takeaways if you combine both sides. So, man, I'm pretty pleased with that in two quarters. Well, Coach, Keyshawn Burgos, oh, my, I'm, my word, he looks great early on in this uh, spring game. 
I told you guys he could go. You know, <laughs> he's one of the he's one of the most improved on defense. You know, we got to keep him humble. I think he's going to do that for himself as well. He has a high level of expectation for himself. Big time self starter. Um, he's hungry. We're excited to watch him. Chris Marv, one of the elite coaches in the ACC, was an elite player, a four time All SEC honoree at Vanderbilt. He played uh, under. Uh, Brent Pry in the 2011 Liberty Bowl, and now he's excelling as Virginia Tech's defensive coordinator. You've got a guy in the middle at linebacker that reminds everyone that remembers you as a player uh, of you, and, and that is Sam Brumfield, who's going to be such a key guy for the Hokies this fall. I tell you right now, Sam Brumfield is faster than I was, more athletic than I was, more explosive than I was. Um, I, I mean, we've been really impressed with him. You talk about a young man with a story and just being hungry and willing to do whatever it takes to get to where he wants to get to in life. You talk about going to a JUCO for three years, 4.0 student, goes to Middle Tennessee State. Okay, time to call it. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm talking to one of my fellow colleagues right here. Um, you went to Middle Tennessee State, 4.0 student, gets all conference recognition um, and gets offered by everybody, almost everybody in the country when he enters the portal. You know, previous relationship, him identifying himself with us and the opportunity to play in this scheme are things that attracted him here, man. So we're really excited about him, his future. He's melded with us. I mean, he's hungry, humble, and he's worked his tail off. So we're excited about him. All right, Coach, so we don't want to give anything away for next season, but if you're a Hokey fan, defensively, we got some wrinkles coming up for the 2024 season. We've been working on uh, some stuff to, to get after it defensively a little more. You know, I talk to my guys all the time. You got to be like an iPhone, always updating your software. <laughs> so, man, we, we certainly have. Um, but, again, we're going to trust our fundamentals and know who, who we are. We identify a certain way. We're going to be aggressive. We're going to run by people to the ball and play in the backfield. So those, those hallmarks of who we are aren't changing. And, and Bill asked you about uh, Sam Brumfield, but we added some other additions defensively. They all fit in really uh, well with your unit? Yeah, so far, man, these guys have been working. I think everybody who's come in has been extremely humble, um, has been an, an eager student, and has really just taken coaching, man, and come from great families. They've been developed. They know how to work, and they're just hungry to do what's necessary in order to win. And so, man, we, we, we love Aeneas Peebles. We love Kamari Copeland, I mean, who had an interception today, right? We, we're loving Gilliam, who came transferred here from Oklahoma, who's a Virginia homegrown from Highland Springs. And, you know, we talked about Sam already, man. So we're really excited about these guys. But, again, they're hungry, they're eager, they know how to work. And so we're just taking the necessary steps to get where we need to go. We're talking with the Hokies defensive coordinator, Chris Marv. We already know with – Mansoor Delane and Dorian Strong could do. We saw them last year. You told us yesterday that you thought that Delane had one of the best springs, that he was one of the more improved guys. That was exciting to hear because he was already one of the best in our league. What did Delane do over the last month that has you most impressed? Uh, a lot more detail oriented pre-snap recognition, communication, his physicality at the corner position, I mean, has been extremely noticeable. I mean, you see him coming up and setting the edge like a backer defensive end. But he could also run with Quan Felton, who's one of the fastest players on our team, and play man-to-man -man on him for 60 yards down the field. Man, so we're excited about him. He's a young man who's played corner for us, boundary field. He's played safety for us, and he, he's done a lot of things. He's played even a little bit nickel this spring. So the guy has a tremendous skill set. He's hungry. He's taking the coaching, and I think what you're seeing with him is that he's just growing up. You know, when you get to college and you play early, you, know, you get a lot of recognition early. You get a lot of people who get to know your name, and he earned that. But I think he's growing up a little bit more and taking, um, taking what we're trying to teach him and just applying it a little bit better. He's seen it. He's seen the game. Um, things are slowing down for him, and, again, he's been a lot more detail-oriented. Really excited about Monster Delay. A lot of folks that are Hokie fans in Charlotte are familiar with uh, – Quentin Reddish, who's from Independence, he seemed to be a guy that really stood out. What were your thoughts on uh, Meteor and Roley Quentin Reddish? The moment's not too big for him, right? He's got some guy giving gifts. He's long, athletic, twist up. He can run, but he, the moment's not too big. You know, our safeties coach Pearson Prelo talks a lot about um, guys at DB slowing down their heart rate, right? When they're either playing the ball deep down the field. When they're a one-on-one -on -one situation, if the ball split through the first the first line of defense and the backers, just slowing down your heart rate and playing with great confidence and trusting your technique. You're, we're looking and seeing that from Quinn Reddish. This is a young man who, who should be going to the prom right now, you know, studying for finals in high school. 
and he's doing big time things on the practice field. So we're excited about him. You look at him, coach. He's six three. You guys have him officially listed at one ninety. What an athletic specimen number twenty one is. I mean, as soon as he walks into the room, I think everyone's eyes go to number twenty one Q. He's excited, man. He's exciting to watch. So he's got a lot of growing up to do, like most freshmen. But uh, he's a mature young man, smart. I mean, just watch him play right now. I mean, really good player. All right, one more play, and we're going to wrap it up. Let's let's get some analysis on this play. They're going at the lane. Whoa. No, that's that's Josh Clark over there. Oh, that was Clark. Yep. Yes, sir. So that we're right there. It was we're intended in for Fitzgerald. Yeah, four yep. and orange. Right. Yes, sir. We were in a man-free concept right there. Um, we got an outside release up top. A corner did exactly what we coach him to do. Played the ball, and again, slowed down his heart rate. Didn't that was, panic. That was great coverage by Josh Clark right yes, there, Coach. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Our corners coach, DJ Jones, does a phenomenal job with those guys. We're excited about him as well. That's another tall, long guy, right, that can play corner at 6'2". Yes, indeed. He can run. He comes from a great family, too. His, uh, both of his older brothers played uh, played Division One football. Um, the, the one that's closest to him, I believe, played at uh, University of North Carolina under Gene Chizik, if I remember correctly, or, or John Papuchas, at defensive, uh, the defense coordinator. So, And his family, his mother played college basketball. His father did as well. So you're talking about a young man who knows what it takes to, uh, to work and be a phenomenal college athlete. But, again, he comes from a great family. He knows how to work, very humble and eager to learn. So we're excited about him. Chris Marv, Hokie defensive coordinator. Chris, thanks for joining us today. Good luck today. Good luck with the recruits who are here. We're looking forward to seeing what happens this weekend and this fall for the Hokies. Thank you, guys. We appreciate your coverage, your support. Thanks, Coach. All right. Bye-bye. 41 seconds to go. He talked about uh, this defense creating an identity. And, and, you know, the guys that were freshmen that played a lot last year have clearly improved, and the, the mid-year enrollees and the freshmen like Reddish really look good for uh, Marv on the defensive side of things. Yeah, he's got to be happy with uh, what he's got to work with, a lot of talent. Again, we've talked about a lot of experience that comes back, but a lot of young players too. It'll be a nice mesh, and it's uh, it's great to have as a coordinator, you know, all those all those different parts. He says they've been fun to watch. I don't think they'll be fun to watch for opposing offenses in the fall. Yeah, no. They're, they're good on that defensive line, and they got good towards the midway point of last year, and we saw that if you watch the Hokies' last seven, eight games. 34 seconds. Two timeouts for the Orange team. Watson delivers. That'll be a pickup of seven yards, but a flag on the play. I believe this is the first flag of the uh, of the game. Jeff Pumphrey is our ACC referee. Hands to the face. Offense number 77. 15-yard penalty. Replay. Third down. They call Brody Meadows for hands to the face, so it's going to be third and very long with 28 seconds. Hey, coming up at the half. Reeney, we've got a great segment for you. We have the best of mic'd up from this past spring. We put microphones on the Virginia Tech assistant coaches during spring practice, interacting with the players. Guys like Tyler Bowen, the Hokies offensive coordinator who you see there, really get inside what happens during spring practice. Yeah, mic'd up's the best. I mean, he really gives you that inside look. And I like it when they don't tell other people around them that they're mic'd up because you hear some great stuff, but you almost have to let them like, I'm mic'd up just so you know because you could uh, some crazy stuff can be said. <laughs> yeah. Montel finds their, uh, the coach of the other team over there. By the way, he's had an amazing ascension at Tech as a recruiter, as a position coach developing guys so fun to see uh, the players rally around him he was promoted to the Hokies assistant head coach this past offseason we'll hear from coach Mines uh, coming up in a bit you know, we talk about the transfer portal losing players you can lose coaches too like like Montel Fines a great coach it's a great keep if you will for coach Pry to make sure he kept him on this staff Watson throws that one away. It'll be fourth down with about 20 seconds to go. Also coming up at halftime, we'll be joined in the booth by the newest Hokie, Megan Duffy, Virginia Tech's new head women's basketball coach who joined Tech this past week. 
coming from Marquette. They're just going to let the clock wind out, even though that was an incomplete pass. And the Maroon team will take a 21-7 lead into halftime. Coming up, mic'd up behind the scenes of Virginia Tech spring football. An inside look at Brent Price program from Blacksburg, Virginia. That's straight ahead from Blacksburg. Halftime, Maroons up 21-7 at the Virginia Tech spring game. Bill Roth, Rini, and Golia with you from Lane Stadium in Blacksburg. It has been a beautiful day. Hey, isn't a Virginia Tech spring football game a ton of fun, buddy? I, this is my second one. I love it here. As you said, great weather, great crowd. They really support their Hokies. I love coming here. We've seen a lot in the first half from Tech. It's actually what we thought we would see. A lot of the younger players and the newcomers have really contributed. Yeah, well, first, Kyron Drones is everything we knew Kyron Drones is going to be. So he's done, obviously. We won't see him again. Uh, P.J. Prelo, though, really stepped up and I think was a highlight for this Virginia Tech team in that first half. All right, here's what you missed. Drones played the first quarter and does exactly today what he did last year. Get on the move, deliver the ball beautifully. Said he worked on his accuracy this spring. Looked pretty accurate today. Leadership ability. We saw him throw a ball away and not force it in there. Touchdown pass. So, yeah, everything you wanted to see out of Kyron Drones. We saw, and then P.J. Perillo stepping up again. A guy in space that can be dangerous. That's an inside handoff where he shows his speed. Another one, you see that, that cut, that jump cut right there. And then this is what I really like. Get him in to the flat. Get him in the passing game. And this is where I think he's going to pay dividends next year for this Hokies team. There are the numbers for Kyron Drones and P.J. Prelo. You know, we know that, that Kyron has the ability to be even better. And that is why there's so much optimism for Virginia Tech this year. That guy on the left. You, you listen, first and foremost, you have to have a standout quarterback if you're going to win in college football. And Kyro, Kyron Drones is that. Prelo did his work as well. You and I have been talking all week. Every team, every coaching staff talks about there is great optimism during the spring. Yeah. It is legit here. You could see at the end of last season how well this team played how they were beating people pretty bad, and how good they can be. You don't win a bowl game, okay, and bring back this much productivity and not, you know, be optimistic and good for next season. Again, the ACC needs to watch out because I really think this Virginia Tech team is going to compete next year. Running clock in the third and fourth quarters, and that's Jeremiah Coney with another big run. He's had a really nice day as well. Hermitage High School product. There were two or three days this year in spring ball that number 21 looked like he could be a real star. He's got breakaway speed. We saw that earlier here today. Yeah, all the running backs today have really impressed. They've all run hard, hit the hole, shown patience, good speed. It's a good running back room for sure. Jeremiah gets it again, and this time he runs into James Jeanette once again. And we've called Jeanette's name out a few times today, and it's a good sign for played Jeanette. At, uh, played at William and Mary, and now a hokey again, running clock here. So the Orange team is down two scores. Even though it's early in the third, you get the sense that eh, you got to go for it if you don't pick it up on third down here, no? Yeah, and get the tempo up a little bit as well. Here is Watson to the air. Oh, he had good protection until Jeanette got him again on the back, and that'll go as a sack, and it will be fourth down. Yeah, again, that's just excellent coverage in the secondary. I mean, Pop Watson had some time to throw the ball, but great coverage. We'll step aside. Early going quarter number three. The Maroon team leads it 21-7 in Blacksburg. Draft roll the 25th. There's some guys in orange and maroon today. They're going to have their names called. Here are the top six quarterback prospects. We'll take a look at that again in a second. 
what a year it's going to be. If you are a high draft pick this year or a team with a high draft pick, there's some guys that can sling it. Yeah, some good quarterbacks right there. I've seen Drake May in person, and uh, he impressed for sure. And he's going to be a high pick as well. But, you know, everyone believes, you know, Caleb Williams is going to Chicago. So we shall find out. We'll see. Here's Whitkey on the run under pressure. You know, the defensive front has done really well today. That was Jordan McDonald getting some heat on there. Jordan's out of Salem, Virginia. Adams has been in there as well. I think if there's a story today, it's, it's, it's the pressure that the defensive front has been able to put with a lot of different guys on each side. And, and Josh Fugo, one of the leaders. I don't I don't believe he's playing today, is he? I haven't seen him. Yeah. So He's dressed. And APR. I mean, I mean look at Antoine Paul Rotland. Oh, maybe the best, right? I mean, those guys, they don't need to play today. And so, yeah, time for other guys to step up. But, yeah, that defensive line position is deep. They're deep in a lot of, a lot of positions. It's fourth down. Now, the Coach Pry can change the down. When you're coaching in the spring game, you can do just about whatever you want. I think he's going to change the field position. They're going to just flip the field here, Reeney, without even kicking. Yeah. We're going to step aside. When we come back, we're going to be joined by one of the all-time Hokie greats, Andre Davis. That's next. We are back at Lane Stadium in Blacksburg, and we are joined by one of the all-time great Hokies, Andre Davis, now the director of Student Athlete Support and Community Engagement here at Virginia Tech Athletics. Nice to see you, man. Bill, it's great to see you as well, man. It's an honor to be up here with uh, two legends. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I appreciate that. it. Hey, we're excited to have you here and, and to talk about what you're doing and what you see on the field today and the vibe you're getting from this program. Yeah, uh, the vibe is, is top notch right now. Uh, I think that's the one thing that I've really been looking for when I get a chance to get out here and see our guys play uh, is one, to see the excitement on the sideline from former alumni, former players, from the fans like it's all there the expectation um, that we have um, for the team this year is something that we're looking forward to seeing the product from practice and really end up seeing it in a game we had I was talking with Rainey earlier over a hundred former players back in town for this weekend in this game it is so it's very surreal to see these guys and they come back with their kids but how about the love of your your teammates and guys that even played before yeah. you coming back yeah, it really is special, and I think I know as I see my different role that I've had here uh, as director of student athlete support, but then also trying to connect the generations. I think that was the one thing that's been the hard thing is that guys with Coach Beamer, and then you got the Claiborne boys, and then you've got you know Coach Fuentes' kids. None of us really mix like that, and so for us to finally get a chance to get back try to make it a point to have guys introduce each other to one another, especially guys who play the same position. Now, you're very integral with, with the players on and off the field, and a lot of people might not realize, but this is a team, as a team, 3.0 GPA, which I know you guys are proud of. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I think for me, it's always being a student athlete. Sure. And, and for us which to really... Which we've, we've lost a little bit it, today. Yes. <laughs> and it's been very tough to, to see, um, but we want these guys to be uh, all around great young men that are going to be contributing members to our society. And to see what they're doing on the field is great, but for me, I get just as much joy yeah. seeing the great stuff that they're doing in the classroom. Third down, let's see what this offense can do here. Coney has a bit of a seam. Another good tackle. Andre played nine years in the NFL, and I think that's what's so special for Hokie fans. A, a young man that comes here, stars, won so many awards as a player, goes to the league, now has come back to Virginia Tech and is contributing even more uh, in his post-career. And that's the great thing, too, Andre. He's like, these players, they give you that level of respect even more because they know you're a former player. You're not you're not going to tell them to do something that you haven't done. And you had a nine-year career in the NFL, so it's just a great blend that you're now back giving to your to your uh, alma mater, which I think is 
Fantastic. Absolutely. Jump ball. And it's going to be incomplete. It's hard to do. This wind is whipping up to 40 <laughs> miles an hour. Not a good day to be throwing <laughs> it like that. Not a good day. So I hope the fans can understand that if a receiver loses the ball in the air, if the ball doesn't look just right, there's some extenuating circumstances that are happening out there. All right, Narini, when this guy played Let's number see 88, I need, we need to see it. I am telling you there has been no one better ever to play on this field at the wide receiver position than Andre Davis. This is one of my favorite. Remember this, Andre this I against do. WVU? This this was the warm-up, right? This was uh, me just getting my legs right, making sure I do some hurdle drills over the guys. Ball in the left hand, though. The ball was in the right hand, <laughs> fundamentally sound. That's in the national championship game against FSU. Here we go. There we this go. This is the same West Virginia game. Really air it out right there. Get that started. And then definitely had to save the best for last that uh, we're not going to see. But it, it was a little violent punt return uh, that was pretty special. And even with the big shoulder pads, you still had great speed. <laughs> How about like so nonchalant? Like, oh, yeah. Catches the 80 yard pass from Vic just by reaching his hands out. Go in the end zone. It's nonchalant. I, I don't think me and Mike tried to make it as nonchalant as possible. He was always just the flick of the wrist, and he would go 70 yards. And my whole goal would be to try to make sure he would never outthrow me. You know, you were. A uh, tremendous track star in high school. When when you first came to Virginia Tech, I don't think we knew who you were. We knew an uh, upstate New York kid came in, but we thought, well, he, he can run. What's he going to be about? What was the key to your development as you reflect back in the late 90s to become the player you did? Yeah, I don't think I, don't think I knew I was a football player at that time. I, I think with many young players, you get into a new situation, I only played two years of high school ball, so I wasn't really aware of all of the nuances of what it took to really be a good football player. Um, and I didn't want the contact either. I was a track guy. I was just running straight and was worried about everyone staying in their lanes. But when I got here and I saw the camaraderie that we had, I saw the belief that a lot of other my teammates had in me, it got to the point where I was just like, I really believe we have a good team. And seeing how we were able to make each other better each and every day, it made me want to be better uh, for our team. Are you seeing some of that, the chemistry that you guys had in the late 90s here again with Coach Pry and this group? Absolutely. I think that's the one thing why you see the energy level at such a high level right now is that we're seeing all of the hard work that we did back in the day. We're seeing that same sort of process being uh, taken place right now. And so as we see the guys focused on the field, even with all of the distractions that they have off the field, we're seeing guys who want to work and want to get better. And uh, ooh. that's a big hit. Yes, I need an ice pack on that one. That was Penix that came up there and uh, lower, lowered the boom right there. My back hurts just well, watching that. What about you, Andre? <laughs> exactly. I think I need to go sit down after this for a little Wait, bit. Now, I got to ask Andre now. Former wide receiver, let's critique this group. Now, they top to bottom, this wide receiver group may be the deepest position group for these Hokies, what have you seen from them? What do you like about them? Yeah, I was talking to uh, Ali Jennings uh, yesterday, I think it was, and I was telling him, I was like, you guys are kind of stacked yeah. at wide receiver right now. And I was like, you know, I'm I'm really wishing you guys the best for you guys to continue to push each other. Because yes. that's what happens is that when you have a room that's stacked like that, sometimes it's going to be hard for everyone to yeah. get involved. But if you guys continue to push each other, that's what's going to be. Continue to outdo each other, continue to uh, outwork each other, and the whole group is just going to get better. No doubt. I remember we played, uh, back when you played the spring game here, there would be maybe 8,000 people, maybe 10,000 people that would come. And now uh, it's amazing to see so many recruits. There's over 100 recruits here today, and the tailgate lots were packed. When I was driving in today, I'm like, is this the spring game, or are the Hokies getting ready to play Clemson tonight? Absolutely. I think it's great to see, once again, the product that we're putting on the field and the way Coach Pry has really built up what the program is about and what he believes we can be. Everyone has that hope, and I think that's what continues to bring us all out to see all of the things that Coach Pry is talking about. Yeah. We want to see it for ourselves, and I think with how last year was, with all the sellouts that we had, we've got a great community uh, behind us of Hokies who are looking for great things to come. By the way, this is Ben Locklear into the game at quarterback now. He's uh, out of Fredericksburg, Virginia. Wearing number 19. 
And again, with that wind, that's a, that's a tough pass to complete. You talk with Ollie Jennings, I know, you know he, he got hurt. There was so much excitement last year, and then he got hurt. His mentality is, seems to be just on point right now, what he wants to do here as a, as a Hokie now. He's with his third college team, but clearly he bleeds orange and maroon. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, we've got a lot of guys who, who do really well, and I, I try to get the opportunities to speak with them when I can and just continue to encourage them. Um, but I especially reached out to Ali last year, especially after he got hurt, because I think those are the players that often – get lost in the shuffle because of them being hurt and not being able to produce on the field, they get left behind. And I was just trying to tell him to mentally, you've got to stay in the game. You've got to continue to help your teammates who are out there. And that's going to be something that's going to help keep you sharp for when you come back. Andre, thanks so much for coming by, man. Always great to see you. Thanks, man. Of course. Thank you for having me. Andre thanks Davis, thank you. Virginia Tech great, joining us here in the booth. Stay tuned. We've got more coming up from Lane Stadium in a moment. We go to the fourth quarter of this year's Virginia Tech spring game in Blacksburg. Great crowd. They've been having a blast here today. The tailgate lots were just about full at about 9 o'clock this morning. We've got a nice crowd on hand here today. And the Maroon team with a 21-7 lead as we go to the fourth quarter. Let's see if the Orange team has a rally. Jackson Sigler is in the game at quarterback, and he's going to throw a deep one. And it is going to be roll to catch. Chance Fitzgerald hauls it in, and it's first and goal. Yeah, Fitzgerald's another one of those wide receivers that coaches are really high on. Excellent throw. Yeah, clearly in excellent concentration by Fitzgerald. And this is the, this is the direction you want to go to throw those balls. The wind's behind you. Excellent pass. So the Orange team, you know, Reaney, they were down 21-0. They're trying to make this a one-score game. And that is a touchdown. Here comes the orange team. That was Traylon Mitchell out of Middlesex, North Carolina with the touchdown. He red shirt freshman, wearing jersey number 16. And all of a sudden, we've got ourselves a one score game here at Lane Stadium. Yeah, set up by the nice throw by Ben Locklear. Chance Fitzgerald, one play later, pounded it on the ground. And the PAT is good. Here's the play again, again, Ben Locklear is the QB that set this up, and here's the short touchdown run by Mitchell. Good job by Mitchell, just kind of patient in there, let that offensive line set those blocks up sometimes. Running backs can be impatient at the goal line. It's just that little bit of hesitation and then accelerate and get in there. Well, we've got the spring game here in mid-April, but looking ahead to the fall, here is what the Hokies schedule will look like. Starting in Nashville on the 31st, Hokies have four non-conference games to start. Vandy and ODU on the road, the Marshall and Rutgers games here at home. It's a fun schedule. You've got a SEC team on the road, a Big Ten team at home, and Brent Prize Club, high expectations. Listen, I really believe the Hokies can be 4-0 going into that game at Miami, which is a fr will be a Friday night national uh, primetime game on ESPN. Um, I really believe that's where their mindset's got to be. Now, Coach, Coach Pry, he... He, and he li lives it. It's one day at a time for him. He's not looking ahead. But us as fans, we're all looking ahead at that schedule. And I know everyone is uh, looking at that, hoping, okay, we can get off to a quick start 4-0, and then we're for real. I know the Hokie fans are excited just to make that Nashville trip to start. It's been a while since Tech has played in Nashville. Penalty marker on the play. That's just the second flag of the game. Darius Taylor made the tackle. Let's see what the call is. And how about the old school we'll get the call here first? Personal foul. Personal foul. Face, mask. Face mask. Defense number 50. 15-yard penalty. First down. I was going to say the old school Hokey fans when uh, Rutgers comes to town here. It's a little uh, old Big East days. 
It'll feel that way for sure. So Taylor gets called for that penalty, and that gives the Maroon team a first down. Running clock here in the fourth quarter, so the Maroon team leads by seven. This is Jackson Sigler, the quarterback out of Stafford, Virginia. Number 15 in white. And he throws that behind his intended receiver. Hokies will play that Miami game on a Friday, and then they'll head out west to Palo Alto. You know, that'll be the first ever ACC home game for Stanford, and yeah. Virginia Tech will visit California. It's interesting how the ACC has scheduled it. Obviously, you got to get creative. So we just talked about it. Virginia Tech plays at Miami on a Friday, and then that next week they get an extra day on Saturday. Both those programs go west. Virginia Tech plays Stanford. Miami's going to play Cal. Well, when you add three new teams, you know, it was just two years ago that the ACC came out with what was called the 335 model. Yeah. That's gone away now. So with Cal, SMU, and Stanford coming in, the coaches and the ADs have decided to maintain an eight-game-per-year schedule. But what's neat about this is you're going to play everybody twice over the next seven seasons. So the Hokies will play SMU, Cal, Stanford, twice over the next seven years. And I think that's exciting that you get to go everywhere. Yeah, the ACC has done a nice job with that schedule. It's not easy, right? You're adding teams from the West Coast, and but they've done an excellent job in, in scheduling it. That'll go as a sack as Sigler is tapped on the backside by Jordan McDonald, 640 to go, and a turning clock. Well, for Hokie fans and all ACC fans, there are a lot of alums in our league in Northern California. They'll get a chance to see their favorite team in their hometown. It's been a while. We'll step aside. Final 624 coming up in just a moment. Back in Blacksburg, we're joined now by third-year offensive coordinator Tyler Bowen of the Hokies as we come down to the final few minutes of the game. Coach, give us a wrap-up from your perspective, what you've seen today. Oh, it's good to see everybody get a chance to get out here in the stadium and play. We've got over 100 lettermen here, good crowd on hand, so it's good to see what guys do uh, in the live fire when there's fans in the stands. We've had a good spring, very competitive. I'm pleased with the progress of our group, and it's good to kind of cap it off with a celebration with a lot of things going on, but a big evaluation with a lot of guys on the field. Yeah, you're going to evaluate the tape today, and what you've done all spring. If there's a takeaway or two from the spring offensively for you as the coordinator. What have you liked? Yeah, just the continuity that we have coming back. Uh, I would say that. I would say two words, continuity and, and competition. I think this has been one of the most competitive springs I've been a part of. Good give and take on both sides of the ball. I've had a good understanding of what's going on. we got a sudden change right now. That's All right, not so a I'm good gonna play. I'm going to have to go. Yeah, we're Let's see if we score. Uh, but, no, cotton, continuity and competition. I'm pleased with where we're at and excited to get going into phase three. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Tebow. Thanks. Well, Joshua Clark made another big play. Locklear wishes he had that throw back. Clark's made some good plays today. You know, there's always a guy that pops out. He's a freshman from Alexandria. Never want to be talking with the offensive coordinator when your quarterback yeah. throws a pick, right? No, exactly. But, you know, you talk about Joshua Clark. We've called his name out a few times. A real nice blanket coverage on the sideline when we were talking with Coach Pry. Gets an interception there, and that's a young freshman that again those big long corners that are everyone's trying to get 6 2 180 he's gonna fill out as well physically but yeah tough throw by Locklear but nice pick by Clark Clark had four tackles and an interception today uh-oh that's not a good snap and it's gonna be killed as soon as Sigler picks it up getting back to what Tebow was talking about Tyler Bowen the the competition and the continuity is something so different from them from where they were last year and the year before because when you come in new coaches in a new program you're just trying to learn everybody's yeah. name and who can fit where now you got a lot of guys back that have done it some of them are in their third spring going through it yeah and just the the amount of experience that you bring back and not just experience but productivity right you're bringing back guys that put good numbers out last year so really something to build on um again this is a, a, a good team, and uh, these coaches are excited for this 2024 season. They, they really run a pro-style spread offense. 
they've kept things a little bit vanilla today. We haven't yeah, seen course. much of the option. You haven't seen, you know, the, the sweeps and the things Listen, you do. This thing's going to get replayed about 10 times on ACC Network, so you want to keep it vanilla, right? Because coaches are paranoid. That's the one thing I've learned. They don't want to put anything on tape uh, prior to the season. Sigler gets tapped on the backside, and that's going to unfortunately go as a, a sack again. Antonio Kaufman Jr. had the interception there, but the whistle was blown. Yeah, would have been a pick. Kaufman saying, uh-uh, I'm calling that an interception, not a sack. Running clock here with 2.55 to go in this Virginia Tech spring game. The next time you see the Hokies will be in Nashville, Tennessee against the Vanderbilt Commodores. Last time the Hokies played over there, it was way back in 1998. Greeny, and they played Alabama in the first ever Music City Bowl. That's the last time the Hokies played at, uh, at the Nashville. Yeah, dating yourself there, Bill. <laughs> oh, we were there. That was a cold and, and rainy night. This, this really wraps up spring practice for Fontel Mines and and, uh, and the Hokies, it's been a really interesting spring with some new names. We're going to run through some of the award winners for you just to give you a sense of who has done what. That's a good throw and a catch as Locklear had the interception. Here are your award winners for the Hokies. Prela, who starred in the first half, he and Miles Ellis win the Frank Beamer Award. As you go through that list, there's a lot of familiar names. I think the one guy that jumped out uh, for everyone we talked to was Aiden Green, is most improved. Yeah, every player we talked to this week individually, and we asked them, hey, who stood out this spring? Everyone said Aiden Green. So looking forward uh, to big things out of him this upcoming season. And on the defensive side, the most improved guy was Delane. And I think that yeah. that shows, you know, he was so good last year for the Hokies, yet he worked hard to make himself even better. When one of your best players becomes your most improved player on defense, yeah. that shows how hard the kid worked. Yeah, and you know what? And that pays dividends because everyone's seeing that. They're saying, man, he had such a good season last year. He's not resting on his laurels. He's working hard to be even better. That rises everybody else up to work harder as well. That's the type of leadership you love to see. That was Zeke Wimbush with the catch. With a minute to go, it'll be third down and five. The orange team has 49 seconds with a running clock. You can't call timeout or stop the clock. So if they're going to tie this thing, they got to go fast. they got time for maybe one more play. Wimbush is out of bounds. What do you think? 22 seconds. Can the Orange team, they got to get it in the end zone here. And that might be the final play. They're going to have to really hurry with 12 seconds to go. They're going to try to get one more play in. Let's see. Throw it deep. See if we can get a Hail Mary in here. This is going to be the last play of the spring game. Can they get it off in time? There's the snap. Locklear going to throw it to the end zone. And it's incomplete. Well, it came down to a dramatic finish nonetheless. And hey, good, good job by Locklear to understand what to do with no timeouts, and you can't stop the clock. Yeah, it was a great job to get two plays off like that and get that ball snap in one second. You know Coach Pride loves that. And yeah, gr great ending there. Drones throws two touchdown passes for the Hokies. P.J. Prelo runs for one, catches another for Brent Prize. Team, a 21-7 Maroon victory for Brent Prize, Virginia Tech team. Our final score, the Maroon 21, the Orange 14. Farini and Golia, I'm Bill Roth. That's it for this year's Virginia Tech spring football game. And so long from Blacksburg. <laughs>